This is AHA Business Radio, creating AHA moments for business, by business, and about business, providing opportunities to discover information to help you run your business and guide your decision making. The more you know, the better decisions you make. AHA Business Radio is produced by Alan Hirsch Advisors. For more information, log on to ahabusinessradio.com. To join in tonight's conversation, call 410-481-1300. Now, here's your host for AHA Business Radio, Alan Hirsch. Good evening. Welcome to tonight's show. Uh, tonight I have a uh, my monthly CEO spotlight show where I will be highlighting uh, and interviewing four local business owners, Betsy Cirillo of CEO AdNet, John Staub of uh, uh, Align LLC, Neil Costano, Con, Consta, I'm, no, I'm going to foul it up, but it's Constantoulis, uh, uh, CEO of Mo, Moly, and Will G, CEO of Baltim, Balti, Balti Virtual. And they all using strange names because a lot of them are dealing with uh, IT, but not uh, Betsy. So That's my right. first guest in the studio is Betsy Cirillo. Betsy, welcome to the show. Thank, thank you, for, Alan. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, first question, what motivates you to get up in the morning and go to work? Well, a lot of things, but the nature of my work is finding people, jobs, putting people in careers, and um, making sure that they're empowered in the workplace. And given that in the world we live today, work is so important and fulfillment and satisfaction and so is, is so important, that definitely gets me out of bed and gets me going, even the days when I really don't want to go. Sounds like what you really were is about making a difference and helping yes. people find themselves the career that they really needed. Absolutely. And they had a, the, one, if they're not happy, they don't have a passion for it, but really finding a fit where they have a passion for what they're doing. Right. And one of the things that I've always loved is when I see an individual and my client in the struggle of... I don't think I like this anymore, or this isn't working out, or uh, can we look at another strategy? So when I get to, when I, and when I say I, I know it's for my team as well. When we get to be with people in a way to really get deeper, it's like with you, with your coaching work, we're, we're, we're coaches. So we're working with people on a much deeper level to find out what is it that, that really motivates you and what matters to you. Oh, ab absolutely. I mean, I... Without going to, I mean, I had a situation with a, uh, a client who was thinking about uh, a second office, and second location, mm -hmm. uh, until I asked him the question, what, what are your personal goals and how will this new office affect it? They stop and think. They, it really, he said, it, I've been talk, talking to people for six months about doing this. I was the first person that put it in perspective. Mm -hmm. And he's, he didn't, he decided not to go ahead because it would change what his personal goals right. and, and what he wants out of his personal life with his wife and his family. Mm -hmm. Uh, but he can do the same expansion and grow differently from the same location that he's in. So it, it's, it's much so, bigger. It's much bigger because you, right. and you're working with the individuals, uh, on their personal perspective and what their goals are. And it's, you're right, it is very rewarding when, uh, when, they, when they make that change and they make a decision that helps them reach their goals. Definitely. And if you look at how you and I met, so I'm the co-founder of the Maryland LGBT Chamber of Commerce. For those who don't know, please explain it. Yes. So in June 2017, our chamber launched, and we are a 100-member strong organization. Well, some people, I mean, I know a lot of people that, what's the LGBT stand okay. for? Okay. That was my really first question. Yes. LGBT stands for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender. And a lot of times the Q for queer is in, and then there's plus and there's other <laughs> acronyms. Don't ask me all the acronyms. No, I'm not. But, it, but it's a... It's it's a very diverse organization. Extremely, extremely. And I love diversity. And that is the other thing that's very big for me in the work that I do at AdNet. Because there's many times that I talk with people about their where they've been discriminate, discriminated, uh, where they have been harmed in the workplace. And even my clients that have felt they have been overlooked for promotions or some of the things that they've endured in the workplace. So I'm, I'm really working with people from a diverse perspective and a lot of times really pushing extra hard to make sure some of the placements that we make are bringing diverse candidates to the table. 
That, so that, I think that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. So do you as a business usually represent the employee or the employer? Both. Okay. Both. I can't have one without the other. And I think a mistake that a lot of firms like mine do out there is they focus on the customer being the client. And I get that the client pays my fees and pays my invoices, but if I don't have the right people, there's no invoice to send. Well, well, what I was asking was, you usually work under contract from the employer. Yes, yes. But but your real job is then finding the right employees yes. mm -hmm. to meet their needs and their culture, yes. I would think, was, is very important in that kind of uh, process. So what has been one of the biggest challenges you've had in the last 28 years to in growth? Because I know we all have tremendous challenges right. uh, that you faced as you grew your business. Well, I've been through three economic downturns, and my company has come back stronger every time. We are now a federal contractor. We have won a number of certifications, so we're an 8A certified company, and we're one of the first, if not the first firm, that was certified under the SBA's 8A program on, uh, with LGBT as our economic disadvantage. So... Or is it social? Social disadvantage. <laughs> yeah. Um, as well as gender. So that is something that was really important to me, constantly recreating uh, myself. Uh, in twenty, When you own a company for 28 years, you don't want to go to work every day. That's just the truth. And there's days that the wind is taken out of your sail. But with a lot of faith uh, and surrounding myself with the right people and having a wonderful wife and family to support me at every turn, I'm able to recreate myself, and I have the freedom and the flexibility to do that. Well, as I said to a client today, a uh, uh, good entrepreneur builds a company and scales the company to the point where they don't have to be there every day. Mm -hmm. That if, he, if you can walk away and go on vacation for a month and the business runs, you've really created a great business because you're, you're making more money, doing more, and enjoying your life and enjoying the business much better. Mm -hmm. So, uh, one last quick question. Yes. If you're talking to entrepreneurs, you've done it for 28 years. What is one or two quick points that you would suggest to other business owners who might be listening or those who are interested in becoming a business owner that would help them uh, in their journey? Well, I'm going to give you two. One is from a diverse uh, a diversity standpoint. So, to my colleagues out there that are non-diverse, uh, there's a saying that I heard last week that really resonated in my soul, and I'm going to read it to you. Privilege is invisible to those that have it. It is our job to share privilege with others until it is invisible for everyone. And I believe that's the same in entrepreneurship. We have to share our gifts and our talents across the board with new businesses, new business owners, diverse business owners, small business owners, uh, and even be able to have the guts to tell the large business owners what you're doing isn't okay and cut it out. Okay. Thank you very much. Again, I want to, uh, Betsy, we have to go to commercial. So how can the listeners reach you? Uh, email address is bcerulo at adnetp3.com. You can go to our website, adnetp3.com, as well as call corporate office for 10-715-4040. Uh, again, I want to thank you for being here. Thank you, Alan. Uh, when I come back, I will have John Staub, the CEO of Align LLC. Later in the show, I have the AHA Business Trivia Contest, the winner of which receives a gift certificate to Touche Touche. Uh, I do, too. I've been there. Uh, it's a wonderful bakery cafe in uh, Elk Ridge, Maryland. Uh, I'm Alan Hirsch of Alan Hirsch Advisors, your host. This is AHA Business Radio on CBS Sports Radio, 1300 a.m. I'm Alan Hirsch, and I believe in making a difference in the lives of others. I help you understand your vision, both professional and personal, discover why you're in business, work with your visions to align them with your why, give you feedback on what is important, and hold you accountable for your decisions. All this so you can improve your life and improve the lives of the people around you. If that sounds like someone you want to work with, give me a call at 443-977-4500. That's 443 
877-4500. Looking for a new website for your business? Need some help getting people on your pages? Adventure Web Interactive is your all-in-one website source. Our websites have won multiple awards and recognitions for innovation and design. Choose from services like website design, mobile app development, database integration, SEO, social media marketing, and content writing. Call Adventure Web today for a free consultation at 410-788-7007 or click on advp.com. Search engine optimization can be critical to the success of any business. Every enterprise wants to solve the mystery of SEO. Here are a few facts. Four times as many consumers would rather watch a video about a product than read text about it. 40% of consumers say that video increases their chances of making an online purchase. Search engines like Google and Bing recognize that consumers stay twice as long if your site has video content. Call LW Biz Flix at 443-465-8300 to see how video content can drive your SEO upward. Product videos, website introductions, video testimonials, educational videos, explainer videos, you name it. Call LW Biz Flix today at 443-465-8300 or check out their website lwbizflix.com. That's L-W-B-I-Z-F-L-I-C-K-S.com and get your business on track to maximize your SEO. Great athletes have coaches. So should CEOs and business owners. Hi, this is Alan Hirsch of Alan Hirsch Advisors. Owning a business takes drive, desire, and a certain amount of luck. Well, I can't help you with the luck. I can help you make better decisions, giving you a competitive edge. If you own a business, I invite you to contact us. Our goal is to help you align your company vision and your personal lives so you'll make and execute better decisions. At Alan Hirsch Advisors, we create those aha moments. Log on to allenhirschadvisors.com for more information. I-95 Business Magazine delivers direct access to business executives, decision makers, and professionals in Baltimore. I read every issue, so should you. It presents valuable and relevant stories, provides insights and ideas, and profiles successful and remarkable CEOs. It connects professionals with businesses. I-95 Magazine tells stories. Let it tell yours. Find it at i95business.com. Now back to AHA Business Radio, creating AHA moments for business, by business, and about business. Once again, here's your host, Alan Hirsch. Welcome back to tonight's show. Uh, this segment, I'm in the studio with John Staub, or Staub? Straub. Straub. I, that's okay. I, that's Close okay. Enough. I misspelled it because I left the R out then. Strong. Uh-huh. Ah, my fault. Aha. Uh-huh. Uh, and you're the owner and founder of Align LLC. That's right. Uh, first question, what motivates you to get up in the morning and go to work? Well, first of all, thank you, for, Alan, for inviting me to this. I appreciate it's the opportunity. It's my pleasure. I'm a techie. I've been a techie all my life. I like uh, machines and equipment, and I try to I enjoy figuring out how things work and how to make them better. Uh, and so I, I, what stimulates me from getting to, to get up in the morning is to know that I now run a company that is entirely devoted to technology. I try and select technologies that are, uh, could have the potential for a watershed event in a company that adopts it. Uh, so it, it's a complex technology, but very attractive, very uh, powerful, and uh, it, it stimulates me every day. So... You're fairly young at doing this as a, but so right. what is this new product and new service that uh, is inspiring you? Created this passion to start your own company. I uh, I specialize in two different technologies. One is much more mundane than the other, just telephone systems, uh, and the other is called hyperconvergence technology. And I'll explain. Please that. do because I don't know I'll what explain it means. It. Uh, but let, let <laughs> Even me after we you. talked about it prior to the show. <laughs> well, let me tell you a little bit about uh, just cover uh, the base a little bit on the telephone system because uh, I was the chief technology officer for uh, a credit union for 18 years, and during that 18 years, I. I implemented two products that made a real difference to the uh, lifeblood of that institution. Uh, the telephone company was uh, uh, that I, or the telephone system that I implemented, is called 3CX. Uh, it replaced a very expensive Cisco voice system 
uh, at about a third of the price, and um, uh, the new system was so much better than the old one that I w- I've, to this day, uh, and this was two years ago, uh, received compliments from the employees there saying, thank you for such a wonderful system. It cost them a third of the cost. It, it runs Windows, so their whole staff could, could manage it. It's easy to manage. Uh, the, so it interacts with Windows? It, it uses Windows as its operating system. Oh, so okay. it's the same operating system that every PC in the, in the institution Practically every employee knows how to manage this telephone system, and they can be very complex because you have menus, you got uh, audit, automatic hostess, uh, an auto attendant software, and so forth. The 3CX system works great. If uh, anybody who happens to look at this is is in need of a new phone system, I'd appreciate a call because I can. So how I can, can uh, how can the uh, listeners and we'll get to that, but how can okay. they reach if they want a new my, phone system? My phone, my cell phone is two four zero six six zero zero two nine two. Uh, it's a line, my email address, well, and the website. We'll get to is, that. Okay. And in the meantime, if anybody does want to call and has any questions, give us a call, 410-481-1300. Great. Now, the hyperconvergence, called HCI, which stands for Hyperconverge Infrastructure, and it is a, a way to virtualize a whole data center. It's only applicable to companies that are large enough to have their own data center, and it needs to be an in-house data center. That's where it applies best, although it can be applied in a hybrid cloud in-house data center. Uh, So what a data center is, of course, is a a room that houses all your computer servers, all of the equipment, and all of the data that keeps a company going. Email, uh, CRM product, your core data product, all your member customer data, et cetera. It can, uh, and and one thing about data, it gets bigger and bigger every single year. It usually doubles in size every year. So it's important how you design this data center. Uh, At the credit union that I used to work for, I replaced a legacy data center, a traditional system, which uh, amounts to about 200 machines, uh, divided into three different categories. There are servers, there's storage, and there's switching equipment, uh, or the the connectivity between the servers and the storage. So it's a whole array of hard drives, spinning hard drives, a whole bunch of servers, now, everybody who owns a data safe, uh, a data center these days has already virtualized their servers. This is technology that's been totally adapted by everybody in the world, practically. Uh, you'll not find a data center that hasn't, that, with more than, say, five servers that haven't virtualized those servers. By virtualizing, you mean? Turn it into software. In other words, uh, before there was virtualization, you'd have 50 servers. Each one had its own box, own fan, own power supply, own NIC card, etc. And then it would run an application. Virtual allows you to take 100 of those servers and put them on one box because you turn it into software. Okay. One software for all the servers and you put it into a box. Well, hyperconversion takes that same concept but does, applies it to the whole data center. So if you've got 200 machines in a data center, including the servers, the switching, and the storage, you can convert all of that to a single software product and install it on a single machine. Uh, now, for years, I thought this was too good to be true. It couldn't possibly work. It was uh, too simple, too simple an idea. But uh, at Lafayette, I was forced to come up with a solution that would allow us to move. We had Rolls-Royce equipment, and a credit union is in this kind of difficult position. They need a facility that's a Rolls-Royce quality because they don't want it ever to go down. It's got to be going 24-7. The members need to log into their account, see their money. They want to do it anytime they want, and it's not acceptable ever to go down. So they need expensive equipment, but a credit union is a nonprofit institution. That's right. I was going to so say, it's, so they, uh, they it's don't a make a real them. stretch. It takes most of the resources just to have a suitable data center. I converted their traditional, eight, it cost uh, in total about $850,000 for their data center to a hyperconverged system from SimpliVity. It's now SimpliVity was one of the first on the market. Now they've been bought by HP, and so it's HPE SimpliVity. It's exactly the same software, but it's now supported by a, an enormous company. So it's even better. Um, that SimpliVity, uh, we created one node that had the whole data center. It could run the credit union all by itself. Then you replicate that to a second node so you have high availability or redundancy. That makes it so it never goes down. Now it's up all the time. And because the credit well, unless, unless something happens where both centers 
Well, that would be... Uh, that's, that's rare. That's rare, but there's a solution to that, and that's by a third one. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, and, I, and that's what we did at, at the, this credit union, Lafayette Federal Credit Union. We bought three nodes, one for a disaster recovery site, and that went into a, a private cloud solution or environment, uh, and they have uh, completely given up on the old data center. Uh, the new system costs $200,000. Nothing to be sneezed at, but it was about a quarter of what the original system cost. The new, the SimpliVity uh, requires 20% of that to maintain a year, about $40,000. That was opposed to something over $100,000 a year for the others. In addition, you, you only need to know VMware. And this is software that every data center already knows. It's very common. As I said, everybody's already virtualized their software. So you don't need to have experts in Cisco or NetApp or EMC. Uh, so it saves a lot in skills. You don't need to have highly skilled technicians to maintain the system. Hey, like you used to have. Like you well, always have when to I have started, you had to, you, had to have, you had to have people to change the uh, 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 the fuse boxes, the fuses yeah, and, right. the, and the well, uh, right. tubes <laughs> when I started. It's the same way with that telephone system. The original systems from uh, Avaya and uh, Cisco – and uh, uh, Mitel, traditional systems, they're proprietary. You have to hire, have somebody come in from the company and fix them or add extensions and so forth. Now, telephone it's, systems use voice, uh, voice over IP. Right, like, and it, it, all you need is the internet, never, li the internet, internet lines internet. and the, uh, as you said, the Microsoft uh, support system. Right, but the, the problem is with telephone systems that there's now millions of them out there. It's just been flooded with new vo uh, uh, IP, voice over IP systems. So that's why I'm, I'm recommending this system that I actually uh, uh, invested in because I can vouch for it. Mm -hmm. Three three CX. It's a fantastic system and it's one of those much less expensive voice over IP systems that is hard to find in the marketplace because it's so glutted with other equipment. So you're a uh, registered uh, provider and uh, no, I, I work with I. I am an independent IT consultant, okay. but I have corporate relationships with three other companies, and one of them is a, is a company that installs and maintains uh, telephone systems, especially 3CX. It's a very, very good okay. company. It's called Global CTF. So the first thing you really do is you go in and sit down with your clients and figure out what they need. That's right. I'm and then a, you help them solve their problems I, as the consultant rather than actually providing the hardware right. and software. I I. Try and figure out the best solution for them, and then uh, if it's right, I recommend one of the solutions that I'm excited about. Okay. So, if you were meeting a, a new entrepreneur, you started your business recently, mm -hmm. what's one, one or two small pieces of advice you would give to them if they're starting a business? Yeah. Well, I, I've, uh, I spent a whole year learning what not to do to start a business, and I'm, I'm an expert in that. <laughs> I had no interest in making direct calls. I was, uh, I was, you know, spent 18 years, actually more than that, with another company, receiving calls, cold calls from salespeople, and I didn't like getting them, and I could not envision ever making them. So I tried to, I tried to uh, do everything but cold calls, uh, email lists, uh, yeah. et cetera. It turned out uh, none of that worked. In the end, you need to call people, talk to them, establish relationships, and get to know Pe your people customers. People still buy from people. That's correct. That's that's my best advice. Okay. Thank you. And lastly, I want to thank you for being here. How can the guests, uh, the listeners, reach you? All right. The cell phone, again, is 240-660-0292. The company is called Align, and the website is www.align-it.net. And a line is A L I G N. John, thank you again for being here. Uh, need to go to now. Go to the commercial break. When I come back, uh, I will be talking to Neil Kostantoulis, who is the CEO of uh, Moly, and uh, I'm Alan Hirsch, and this is Aha Business Radio on CBS Sports Radio, 1300 AM. I read the Baltimore Business Journal, and so should you. 
The BBJ is the region's leading business-to-business news organization. If it relates to business, the BBJ has it. Learn who is growing, what your competition is doing, who the movers and shakers are, and how to reach them. Visit BaltimoreBusinessJournal.com for breaking news throughout the day. Sign up for daily newsletters. Follow your favorite reporters as they break news via online stories and Twitter. And read the paper each Friday for a deep dive into the stories that matter most. Don't miss the Life and Breath Foundation's Flip Flop Festivus Celebration, Friday, September 21st at the Four Seasons. At this resort casual evening, mingle with celebrities, enjoy great food and drinks, dance to the sounds of DJ Smokey, casino games, raffle prizes, sports and travel packages, and the live auction. Proceeds will help the Life and Breath Foundation serve the sarcoidosis community and fund research. Get your tickets today at lifeandbreath.org or 410-750-8808. I read the Baltimore Business Journal, and so should you. The BBJ is the region's leading business-to-business news organization. If it relates to business, the BBJ has it. Learn who is growing, what your competition is doing, who the movers and shakers are, and how to reach them. Visit BaltimoreBusinessJournal.com for breaking news news throughout the day. Sign up for daily newsletters. Follow your favorite reporters as they break news via online stories and Twitter. And read the paper each Friday for a deep dive into the stories that matter most. Is your website up to the new Google standards? If it has been a while since your website has been updated, you could be missing out on valuable traffic because potential clients can't find you. At Adventure Web Interactive, our web designers can update your site by optimizing it for search engines and maximizing user experience. Contact Adventure Web today at 410-788-7007 for a free website analysis or visit us on the web at advp.com. The Baltimore City Chamber of Commerce is your voice in the Baltimore business community. Our mission is to help our members create lasting partnerships throughout the city and the region by making resources, information, and networking opportunities available to our members. For more information on how to get involved in Baltimore City Chamber of Commerce or to register for one of our upcoming events, visit us at BaltimoreCityChamber.org. That's BaltimoreCityChamber.org. Did you know that in 2015, there was over a billion dollars in theft? Construction sites are being targeted for their copper and equipment. Personal injury claims for retailers are up 74%. Your employees spend two-thirds of their day shopping online and using social media. SOS Tech Group offers comprehensive surveillance solutions to battle this growing epidemic. Call 410-559-7020 or visit sostechgroup.com for more info. Now back to AHA Business Radio, creating AHA moments for business, by business, and about business. Once again, here's your host, Alan Hirsch. Uh, Welcome back to tonight's show. This segment, I'm talking with uh, Neil Constantoulis. I think I got it right this time. CEO of Moly. Uh, Welcome to the show, Neil. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. First question I ask every guest, what motivates you to get up in the morning and go to work. A wife and four kids. That's my motivation. <laughs> to get out of the house so they don't, they're not getting in your way? or <laughs> You know, the alarm goes off. I'm showering out of the house in 10 minutes. Okay. <laughs> so, tell what is Moly? Tell me about it a little bit. I know uh, uh, a little bit about it since we've talked a little, but explain it and how you got it started. Sure. So, uh, this October, we'll be celebrating our three years in business. So, Moly is a cloud company. Uh, we essentially focus on two primary sections of the technology sector. We do business continuity, which is backup and archiving of data, as well as cloud hosting. So we host servers and applications in our cloud. Um, like I said, three years, we'll, we'll celebrate our three-year anniversary in October. So why would you go into the cloud? I mean, you're, you're competing, uh, from what I know, you're completing, competing with Microsoft, you're competing with Amazon, uh, some of the largest companies in the world uh, who do cloud storage. So what what is it that put you in the direction of trying to compete with them? That's a great question. I think for us, when we first started the business, we were reselling somebody else's cloud. And I think after the third time, the cloud provider, our clients were down telling us they got hit by lightning. We are like, okay. So we built our own cloud. The main reason would be for support. Uh, We have a great architect team of cloud engineers and architects, and we like to control our cloud environment. So the biggest thing would be from the support angle is is they can reach out to our techs and have support uh, a phone call away. For those who might not know, 
uh, and there might be some out there, explain the cloud from a computing process. It's not something that rains down on us. It is not. Uh, so if you'll try to explain that in simple terms, and then why what you're doing is so important for businesses. Good question. So essentially, a cloud environment is we rent space in a data center, and we have hardware. So it would be servers, storage, compute, all hosted in a data center. So for small businesses, large businesses that don't want to own any servers or hardware on site, we host all those servers or applications in our cloud for them. So what that means is they never have, to buy, never have to buy hardware again, never have to update software, never have to monitor and maintain the servers or storage. We do that for them. So will they st- well, don't they still have to buy the, the software to execute? No. So our service is a full OPEX. There is a zero upfront cost. We handle all that for our clients. So we take care of all the software and all the hardware for them. When, when it comes to the storage and the backup? Yes. Okay. You're, you're not, for example... Uh, if they want to use uh, Microsoft uh, 365 for a email for email systems and data and data systems, you're not providing that. You're backing up that information. So, 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 good question. So, 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 that, so, so two things: the, is there's, there's cloud hosting, right, where we host servers in the cloud. So, you want to start your business and you're thinking about purchasing a server. We would say, hey, you're not a technology person. Instead of purchasing that server, we will host that server for you in our cloud. And the second piece is the backup piece for companies that have servers on site that want to make sure their data is secure in the event of disaster. We have a cloud backup solution where their data is, is replicated from their server back from their server to our cloud in Baltimore. So you're what I'm hearing and correct, correct me so the listeners understand as well. Uh, you're create you're you're creating the software and hardware have the hardware and software that allows your clients to store their data in the cloud. Correct. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. By the way, if anybody is interested uh, calling Neil or myself, have any questions for Neil or me, give us a call, 410-481-1300. So why is it important, uh, you know, Amazon can store it in the cloud for you. Right. Well, Microsoft has a cloud program. Apple has a cloud program. I mean, these are... Well, Apple's the first trillion dollar company. Right. So why would, what, what do you provide? What's the value proposition that you provide for your customers that they don't provide? Okay. So we are, so Amazon's backup and archiving solution, AWS, is, is, is S3. We're the only company in the state of Maryland that owns and operates their own S3 cloud, meaning you could back up and archive your data to our <laughs> cloud. The biggest takeaway is, is uh, hidden costs. There's something called egress fees. It's very inexpensive to get your data to Amazon's cloud, Azure's cloud, but when you pull your data back, there's a, it's called an egress fee. They're charging you for pulling your beta, data back. We do not charge our clients egress fees. So it's very easy to budget for your backup or archiving costs based on your data size. So for example, you have 10 terabytes of data, you know exactly what your monthly bill will, will be from that 10 terabytes of data. And if you need that information and data a month down the road, a week down the road, six months down the road, you can get it without having to pay for it exactly. because you own it. Right. You pull the data back, right? We do a restore from the cloud and there's no additional fees. That's the big, it's called egress fees. Uh, the second one extremely important with us is support, right? I mentioned earlier, um, we, there's an 800 number, there's email support. Our, our typical SLA is one hour. So there's certainly what? SLA, service level oh, agreement. Thank you. No problem. Sorry. <laughs> no, I want to make sure the, the people out there, are, you can't imagine when, you, when I get governor, government uh, people, all of the uh, right. <laughs> initials we get. So I'm always listening to make sure yes. that the audience understands so the our question. support is excellent. The other big key is for us in the world of cybersecurity and crypto locker and folks crypto want locker? crypto locker when you get hit with ransomware, right? Okay. So, but for us, what's very important is know where your data resides. If you use the big cloud providers, you have no idea where your data resides. We have a data center here in Baltimore. We have uh, seven cages in Iraq. So we could take customers through on a tour and show them the exact piece of hardware where their data resides, which is very important to people to know where their data resides. And what else, um, you all, besides the one here... Uh, yeah, so we have a replica site in Dallas, Texas, right? So right. we have a redundant site in Dallas, Texas. So if there's ever... An issue with the cloud that we own and operate here in Baltimore. Everything is redundantly backed up and replicated to Dallas, Texas. And then we do have a third site for a couple of European clients in Amsterdam. 
So you could actually do a uh, a triple if you needed to. If if a disaster appeared to happen in the U.S., you still have they'd still be able to get their data. Double is easier. It's, it's very difficult for folks that don't want their data going overseas. See? For example, in Europe, the, your data cannot leave your country. So they want that. The, the data can never come to the U.S., so we keep it separated. Oh, okay, so under uh, uh, EU laws, I Correct. guess, you must store it in the country in which, it's, uh, which the company's in. Correct. Because they also have recently, they initiated a new law about uh, uh, storing, storing data and uh, data access. Right. Which European I, laws also. are very different than the laws here in the States, so we, we keep it extremely separated from that perspective. Okay. Uh, so, again, we're primaries in Baltimore and then replica site in Dallas, Texas. So, you know, I've been doing this three years. What's the biggest challenge you've, you're, you've, you have faced so far in getting from where you were to where you are today? Getting the word out, right? People knowing who we are and what we do and, and all that fun stuff. Like I said, we're the only company in the state of Maryland that owns and operates their own S3 cloud. Uh, and when folks learn about us and we do free proof of concepts to show you it works before you have to purchase it, it's huge for a lot of our clients in small business, man, enterprise, and, and medium business as well. So you, you can do anything from the small entrepreneur up to the, uh, yep. the, large, the large company storage? Yep. We have a, a large uh, community college that almost has 100 terabytes backed up and archived to our S3 cloud. So um, one last question. If you were talking, because I know you also have another business as well, but uh, as an entrepreneur, uh, what one piece of advice would you give to somebody else who is interested in getting into business as an entrepreneur that you would make sure, want them to know and to think about as they go into what they're, they want to do? My advice would be passion. Be passionate in what you're doing. Um, you know, I, I wake up on a Tuesday morning and I feel like it's, it's a Friday morning, right? Being passionate of the service that you're providing to your prospects and customers. Well, there's a, a great uh, uh, quote from... Uh, uh, Steve Jobs, there's a video that he did with uh, an interview he did also with Bill Gates, the two of them on a panel. The only time they've ever that I know of they were on a panel. And that's the same he, same thing he said. You need to have passion for what you're doing because when the, we all have challenges, when you meet those challenges, someone with a passion will will fight through them and get and, and get to where they need to go. Someone who doesn't have a passion walks away. I agree. And uh, thank you very much, Neil, for being here. I really appreciate it. How can the listeners, if they're interested in reaching out to you, reach, reach you and your company? Very simple. An email is probably the best way to get a hold of me. It's neilk at molni.com, N-E-I-L-K at M-O-L-N-I-I.com. Again, thank you for being here. Uh, when we come back from the commercial break, I will have the AHA Business Trivia Contest, and uh, we'll be talking with Will G, CEO of Balti, Balti Visual. Uh, very interesting company. I'm Alan Hirsch, and this is AHA Business Radio on CBS Sports Radio, 1300 AM. In the digital world, first impressions are everything. If your site is slow or outdated, you could be missing out on valuable business. The team at Adventure Web Interactive is ready to help you bring your website up to date so that you can reach new audiences and convert more leads. Contact Adventure Web today at 410-788-7007 for a free website analysis or visit them on the web at ADVP. I'm Alan Hirsch, and I believe in making a difference in the lives of others. I help you understand your vision, both professional and personal, discover why you're in business, work with your visions to align them with your why, give you feedback on what is important, and hold you accountable for your decisions. All this so you can improve your life and improve the lives of the people around you. If that sounds like someone you want to work with, give me a call at 443-977-4500. That's 443-977-4500. Nine seven seven four five hundred. At Offit Kerman, we do things differently. Clients choose us because we understand business and we're innovative problem solvers. We are attorneys who help business owners excel in both their professional and personal lives and in the most productive and cost-effective manner. That's what makes us the perfect legal partner for maximizing and protecting your business value and individual wealth. We are a full-service law firm. We are Offit Kerman. 
How can we help you? I read the Baltimore Business Journal, and so should you. The BBJ is the region's leading business-to-business news organization. If it relates to business, the BBJ has it. Learn who is growing, what your competition is doing, who the movers and shakers are, and how to reach them. Visit BaltimoreBusinessJournal.com for breaking news throughout the day. Sign up for daily newsletters. Follow your favorite reporters as they break news via online stories and Twitter. And read the paper each Friday for a deep dive into the story that matter most. The Maryland Construction Network is an innovative construction association representing the entire construction community. With premier networking events, relevant educational programs, and unique and creative ways to market and promote your business. The question is, why not the Maryland Construction Network? It's affordable and it's effective. As a business coach, I recommend that you check it out for yourself. Visit mdconstructionnet.net to learn more. That's mdconstructionnet.net. Why are your potential customers buying from your competitors? And what are you doing about it? Whether you need to increase foot traffic or web traffic, you need a solid plan to reach new customers. Ah, new customers. That's what it's all about, right? At CK Westbury, we can develop and execute a plan designed to reach new customers and build loyalty with your current ones. We are CK Westbury Media and Marketing. 410-832-2426. That's 410-832-2426. Now back to AHA Business Radio, creating AHA moments for business, by business, and about business. And now it's time for tonight's AHA Trivia Question, where you can win great prizes from the AHA Business Radio Show. Call 410-481-1300 if you know the answer. And now with tonight's AHA Trivia Question, here's your host, Alan Hirsch. Uh, Welcome back to the show. The trivia question for tonight is, what invention did American inventor William Seward Burroughs patent on this date, August 21st, 1888? If you think you know the answer, please give us a call, 410-481-1300. And the, the caller with the correct answer will receive a gift certificate to Touche Touche Cafe and Bakery in Elk Ridge, Maryland. They have amazing bake, bake products over there. So I hope you call, get it, and really enjoy it. In the meantime, while we wait for the callers, uh, in this segment, I have Will G., the CEO of Balti Visual, Visual Virtual, excuse me, uh, I'm not used to seeing Bal- Balti when we usually end it with an O. Uh, but anyway, uh, Will, welcome to the show. Thank you for being here. First Thanks question, so what motivates you to get up in the morning and go to work? Uh, what what motivates me in the morning, uh, aside from my alarm, which is, is somewhat of a new thing for me, I used, to, uh, I used to have a small consulting company that was very flexible hours. I kind of wake up whenever I wanted, and I decided to trade that in for uh, a six o'clock alarm and uh, rushing into an office. So what what I think motivates that is uh, these days really the team. Um, we've got a team of 11 people and I just feel a huge responsibility to them and, and to try to put as much energy as I can uh, towards making a great company. So what is Balti Virtual? Uh, try to explain it. Uh, there might be people out there, the senior product, don't know it's your company. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit about it. So we are uh, a software studio. We're a creative studio. And our focus is really in virtual reality and augmented reality. And so uh, I'll First quickly of all, explain, explain just in case. Yeah, exactly. Please explain the difference, What's the between, the difference? difference between virtual and augmented. Uh, and I... I'll preface this all by saying that as a company, we believe that those two things are merging in the long term. So it's kind of like describing the keyboard versus the mouse to us in some ways. But uh, these days, virtual reality is something that you experience by putting on a headset and it generally transports you and makes you feel as if you're in another place. So you could put on these glasses and go to the beach, put on the glasses and go to play a game. You could go to a live sporting event. Uh, it's generally about moving you somewhere else using glasses. As we talked about before in the show, you you can also go uh, apartment complexes that are being built now build a virtual reality so you can see what the apartment will look like, even being able to see what the view from the window might look like. Absolutely. Yeah, there are tremendous uses for virtual reality yeah. uh, in training and education and things like that. Augmented reality is slightly different. Uh, where virtual reality is taking you somewhere else, augmented reality is... You're seeing reality, uh, you know, 
just like normal, but you're overlaying computer graphics. And so you're showing information. So for instance, I could put on glasses and see Alan over your head or see your Facebook feed or kind of, you know, see whatever uh, contextual information that I needed at that time. So uh, walking down the street, you can so, learn about businesses. Yeah. So tell us a little bit, tell the audience about a couple of the products. I mean, I know uh, it was interesting. Uh, uh, you were before the show, you mentioned it to one of the people that was in the room with us and her children use it. So, yeah. Uh, so that, that's that, a fun that, product. That, and that probably made you real, feel real good. It sure did. That, 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 that didn't even know who you were and yet did it. Yeah, and that, that is, is something that's kind of caught us by surprise. So when we first started Balti Virtual uh, three years ago, we were talking about augmented reality, and most people didn't know what that was. And so we built a product to kind of showcase that and have a little bit of fun, and it's uh, temporary tattoos. We call them hollow tats, like hologram tattoos. And you put these temporary tattoos on, and then you scan them with our free app. And if you have a tattoo of a frog on your hand, for instance, when you scan it, it looks like there's a real living frog on your hand or, you know, all these different things come to life. And so that has just been, it was something we sort of did for fun. And it's amazing that we go around and people are like, oh yeah, my kids love those. So that, that's, that's been really fun for us. And that's, that's kind of grown into a lot, a lot more serious business. Uh, almost immediately we realized that there was a big market in promotional tattoos. So companies like Oreo or, uh, Kingsford Charcoal or all these different companies we've worked with where they were like, oh, yeah, we're giving away tattoos at trade shows. We'd love it if they could come to life. And so that was co completely unexpected business for us. And uh, it's been a lot of fun. And it's grown into a bunch of different things as well. So, so uh, where's the company, you know, where's the company going? I mean, you're, you're how long, when did you get started? How long ago? Uh, 2015. So right after I got married, I decided to start a company. So two adventures at the same time. And I uh, certainly hope you had the support of your wife. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. I'm very lucky in well, that regard. You know, uh, as they say, happy wife, happy life. Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, and so, yeah, we've been around for about three years and uh, where we're going. So right now we're almost entirely funded by client work. We have a couple of little products like hollow tats and things like that that are fun. And we're building some more. But I think where we're but hoping the, to get. But those are being, people are buying them. So it's, I assume they're buying them, which is helping to fund some of the things. The fund, they are. You're getting income and funding some of the new things you're working on. Absolutely. Uh, the bulk of what we do, though, is kind of commissioned work. So if companies like uh, Under Armour or PayPal, they come to us and they want to have <laughs> uh, an advertising or marketing experience that sort of stands out. We build these types of experiences for them. Uh, we, we did a great one with Under Armour where you go into their stores and you can take an app and aim it at the different shoes that are around there. And they kind of come to life. And the athlete that is behind each shoe jumps out. So we had Steph Curry coming out of his basketball shoe and shooting a three. And so that, that stuff was a lot of fun. And that's kind of commission client. And work. Jordan Smith coming out of the golf shoe. We did. Yes. Yes. Uh, and yeah, actually, he was at the the store opening where we launched this product. And uh, so it was cool. Yeah, so that was a really fun project for uh, a number of reasons for so us. So during the, the three years that you've been doing the business, what's, what, what's been the big one of the biggest challenges you faced and how'd you overcome it? I think one of the biggest challenges we face is just we're in an industry that really doesn't exist yet. Uh, we're, we, we're building a technology that's in its early, early days. And so it reminds me of when I was a kid, and we were one of the first families to have a computer. And no one really even knew why you needed a computer back then. I think one of the biggest uh, reasons computers were advertised was it's a place you can keep all of your recipes. And that was kind of the, <laughs> the killer app for a computer. Um, and so I've always loved technology and, and sort of seen that progression of the computer being this funny kind of super techie thing that you program with this arcane C prompt and everything. Fast forward to... Today, everybody's got a computer in their pocket. Well, that it's was the most the, natural yeah. thing. I just do want to remind the audience there is a trivia question still out there, which is what invention did American inventor William Seward Burroughs patent in August 21st, 1888? Please give us a call. You only have a couple minutes left before the end of the show. Uh, please give us a call, 410-481-1300. So uh, it sounds like a... a and, but you're creating that industry. We are. Yeah, we're in the process of creating that industry. And one of the things that's very exciting about this industry in particular is 
um, it's very collaborative. And there are a lot of companies out there that are sharing things that they've spent a lot of time learning, a lot of trial and error, and they just want people to have good experiences. Um, and so that was one of the things that attracted me to the industry very early on. Um, because, it, you know, there are stories out there where if you have a bad VR experience, it can actually make people nauseous. It can make you, you know, give you essentially motion sickness. So now uh, that's really not in anyone's best interest. So now everybody's kind of sharing ideas and learnings and best practices with how to build a comfortable VR experience and those types of things. So it's exciting to be. So where do you where do you see your business in this infant industry in three to five years? Well, in three to five years, we would like to be well established as a leading kind of top tier content provider. Um, the, the AR VR industry, a lot of people combine it into a term extended reality XR. Uh, I think, you know, we would love to be thought of in somewhat the same light as a company like Pixar that builds uh, just amazing content, you know, year after year. And I think that's where we'd ultimately like to be. Well, it's good luck in getting there. <laughs> uh, I hope you do. It'd yeah. be, be great to see that we get another company the size of Under Armour that's doing uh, uh, extreme reality or whatever. Yeah. It's the yeah. extra reality. Uh, in the meantime, one quick question very quickly. Uh, advice to an entrepreneur wants to go into business. What's one piece of advice you would give them? Um, one piece of advice I would give an entrepreneur would be to find advisors and find mentors because starting a business is completely overwhelming and there's so many little things that you have to learn. And uh, in the best case, if you're successful and your business grows, then every day is going to be some new challenge and some new <laughs> thing that you have no idea how to do. And I'm in the middle of this right now. And so I'm, you know, uh, and thankfully I've managed to find a few advisors that can kind of help me navigate those things and, and let you know it's, it's not the end of the world, you know, you, you know, and other people have been there absolutely, and done the same kind of things Thank again. You. Uh, finally, Will, how can, uh, uh, the listeners reach you and your company? Uh, yep. Our website is the best way. www.balti, B-A-L-T-I, virtual, V-I-R-T-U-A-L.com. And we're also on Facebook and Instagram, Balti Virtual. Well, thank you again for being here. Uh, want to remind uh, the que trivia question was what invention did American inventor William Seward Burroughs patent in this date in 1888 it's the adding machine so uh, sorry no one answered it maybe I'll use the gift certificate but we'll have another trivia question next week uh, I want to uh, uh, thank my producer Billy Gohe Goheen be great with names tonight uh, my videographer who videotapes the CEO Spotlight Show, Larry Wilner of LW BizFlix. Please join me next Tuesday at 6 p.m. while I'll be talking business with my guest, Ben Jealous, who's the Democratic candidate for governor of the state of Maryland. It should be a very interesting show, so please join us. I'm Alan Hirsch of Alan Hirsch Advisors, your host. To reach me, call 443-977-4500. Or visit my website, alanhirschadvisors.com. You can also listen to all the past shows and this show in a couple days when it gets online at AHA Business Radio. Uh, you can also see me uh, see my uh, some of the videos on YouTube. This has been AHA Business Radio on CBS Sports Radio, 1300 AM.